Hello everyone, I'm Dan Nance. This is part nine of my life as a Chicago harness racing trainer. In this segment, I'm going to talk about an incident that took place between me and Mickey Rodriguez back at Maywood Park in 1986. Uh, before I get into what happened that night, I got to set the stage and I got to give you the background and what led up to it and the events, things like that. So this might be a little bit long here, this segment. So you can either snap me off and go do something else or you can uh, stick around and listen to the story. You might enjoy it, you might not. I don't know. But anyway, this concerns when Eclipse raced against Ritmo in the free-for-all at Maywood Park in 1986. Of course, Ritmo was owned by my friend Racetrack Phil, who was our former owner. And uh, he was then being trained by Mickey Rodriguez, one of our good friends, who worked for us also prior to... Uh, taking over the training on Ritmo. Now, let's go a little bit back in time. And before we get into the story, I want to let you know, I want you to keep one thing in mind, that Racetrack Phil was a great guy. Never had a problem with Phil. One of the best owners that we ever had. Never told us what to do. Let us do our job. Always paid his bills on time. And Racetrack Phil was a great owner and a good friend. And never had a thing, thing bad to say about Phil. Never will. But things go on in the harness racing business, whether you're friends or not, and things happen. And it's the same, same way with uh, Mickey Rodriguez. Uh, as everyone knows, both of them are deceased now. They're not around anymore. God rest their souls. I hope they're up there in heaven betting horses and having a good old time and looking down. And uh, they'll remember this story if they are up there and there is such thing as an afterlife or whatever. But uh, like I said, they were friends and they'll always be friends. But this is what happened. As far as with Mickey, got to date back a little bit. We, uh, I was racing off the farm, our, our farm that we bought in 1985, and uh, in 1985, when we bought the farm, the summer of uh, 85, at that time, shortly after we bought the farm and we moved in, started, uh, started training the horses on the farm, Mickey Rodriguez came to the farm one day. He was down and out at the time. He was going through a divorce with his wife, Diane Decker. Mickey had no horses. He wasn't training anything. Very down and out. And I can remember him sitting on the couch in my office at the farm. And he said, uh, this is how Mickey talked. He goes, I, 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 tell you, I just want to kill myself. I just want to kill myself. I look at him and I go, come on, Mick, don't talk that way. Things will get better. What's, what's wrong? Come on. Yeah, whatever. Guy was down and out. So, you know, Mickey was a friend of ours for years prior to that. Years. 79, 80, 81, 82, 83, 84. So, I'm jogging a horse on the track one morning with uh, my partner. And, uh... I, we're jogging, and I looked over, and I said, hey, you know, Mick's awful down and out and everything, talking about killing himself and stuff. I go, I go, you know, he needs a job. Let, let's give Mick a job. We, we, you know, we'll give him a few horses to, to, to take care of. You know, pay him decent, have some money coming in. He can help us do some work around the farm here, tear down some of these old paddock fences and stuff, and, you know, stuff like that. So that's what I wanted to do. And uh, my partner... We're jogging alongside each other. Can remember this like it was yesterday. He goes, I don't, I don't know about that. I, I, I don't know if you should do that or not. 
you got to remember, this is a friend of ours now, too. I go, why? Why not? The guy's down and out. Let's hire him. You know, let's give him a job. You know? And he goes, I don't know about that. He goes, hey, just, you, 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 you remember what he did to Eddie Holdeman? What? Well, you know, when he went to work for Eddie Holdeman, you know, he, st he wound up stealing some of his owners and he got, he got three or four horses of Eddie's after he was working for him, you know. I go, oh, come on, he's not going to do that to us. None of our owners are that way. You know, ah, come on. The guy's down and out talking about killing himself. Let's help him out. He's a friend. All right, well, go do what you want to do. So I hired him. We hired him. And old Mick went to work for us at the farm. He was rubbing three head. Two of them were Phil Gagliardo's horses, Tyler Renve and Ritmo. Rubbing, rubbing them. And then and another horse. I can't remember the other horse he was, he was uh, rubbing. But uh, we had Ritmo. At the t we had Ritmo. We were training Ritmo. Phil Gagliardo bought Ritmo from Jack Ackerman for 18 grand. Went into Ackerman's barn at Maywood Park, slapped 18 thousand dollars cash down on the trunk, and said, "I want to buy Ritmo." Now this is when Ritmo was a non-winner's of two. So he bought the horse from Ackerman. We got him, and uh, we took over. Start raising him to the cheap classes, now winners of twos, and I think he was eligible, now winners of three. You know, one with him and stuff. And uh, I also had another horse at the time, Surrender. He was the top three-year-old at that time. Ritmo was also, I think, the same age when we got him. And I had Surrender, who, who, uh, who was a monster in 85, beat Hothead twice. Only horse in Chicago to ever beat Hothead twice, Surrender. So he was my top three-year-old. And, you know, Ritmo was just starting out his career. And uh, we move, as we moved from 1985 into 1986, uh, it was, uh, Surrender started going lame. He was, uh, had problems behind. And uh, Ritmo, we just, we knew there was something there. We just couldn't pinpoint what's wrong with this horse. Mm, he was just a good horse, but, you know, he just, something wrong with him. So we decided, uh, that uh, we're going to pack up Ritmo and Surrender and we're going to put him in a trailer and we're going to drive him out to New York to a vet out there in New York over by Belmont. Have him look at these horses, both of them. So we did. Me and my partner and Phil Gagliardo, we packed the horses up and we drove out. We drove them out to, out to uh, the East Coast. We had this vet look at him. Uh, he operated on Surrender, took some chips out of his hocks and stuff. And uh, took some blue x-rays of Ritmo's knee. And everything came back and said, he's got a problem with this knee right here. I forget what it was, some bone spurs or something. I can't even remember. But he had a problem with his knee. And that's why he was bothering them. That's why he wasn't just as good. So we knew what to do then. We knew what to do. Well, we spent a few days out there in New York. Going to the bed. Went to the track a couple of nights. Then we got in the, you know truck trailer and started driving back home. Now, you know, it's a long drive, it's aggravating, you're pulling the horses through mountains, you know, and this and that. And so, I can remember we're just, uh, we're, we're somewhere in Indiana. We're not far from home now. Everybody's a little bit on edge, you know. All of us are a little bit on edge. And before you know it, I'm driving, and uh, Phil, he said something, and Phil and I got into a little argument. Never had never had a problem. Ever, 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 never had a problem with racetrack field. Him and I never argued nothing. All of a sudden, racetrack field gets a bug up his ass and he starts saying some stuff and arguing. And starts ragging on me about something. I don't remember what it was. And I, you know me, I'm a little bit hot-headed and stuff and I'm not going to take nothing from nobody. And uh, so we start going back and forth. You know, and I, I wind up turning around telling him in the van, listen, Phil, if that's the case, take your horses. Come and take them. Take them tomorrow. Take them. Go ahead. So, we get back to Chicago, you know, unload the horses. Phil gets in his car, drives home. Next morning, come to the barn. I don't know if Mickey heard about it or not by then or not. He probably did get a phone call or something. I don't remember. But uh, we come to the barn in the morning. Mick's over there taking care of the horses. 
Rip Moe, Tyler Renve, might have even been uh, Heather Molly. I don't even know what the other horse was. But I think they were. I think they were all uh, Phil's horses. He was. He was right, taken care of. So I tell Mickey, I go, hey, listen, Mick. I said, I don't know what happened, but Phil and I got into an argument last night in the in the tra uh, you know in the van on the way home. And I told him, you know, pick the horse, take the horses, then, Phil. You know, you, you know, something's bugging you. Take the horses. I don't know what the problem is. Shouldn't be a problem at all. Nothing's going on that I know of. You know, you're in a bad mood for some reason. Uh, you know, on the way home, so you started up something. I don't know. But it was over and done with. But I told Mick, I said, listen, Mick. If Phil does take the horses, and you know, he might ask you to train them. Since you're taking care of him, he might ask you to train the, the horses. He might ask you to take Ritmo and train him. And uh, if he does that, go ahead. No hard feelings. You know, because you're not going to have any, if he takes the horses, you're not going to have any anything to rub here. You're going to be out of a job, Mick. You know, got nothing for you to take care of. So if he asks you, go ahead and train him. No hard feelings. And matter of fact, I'll tell you what's wrong with Ritmo. I, I go and I tell him what's wrong with Ritmo. I pull out the blue x-rays and I said, hey, look at here. You see this, that, and the other. This is what has to be taken care of with this horse. We got to. This is what we got to do. So you know, I go tell the guy that. You know, well, he's a, he was a friend. He was a friend. You know, I figured, hey, you know, if Phil's gonna go, you need a job. You need something to do. You need to make a living. Take the horse. Go ahead. All right. So that's what happens. Phil comes out to the farm later on that morning. We sit in the office for about three hours talking back and forth. We didn't get nowhere really. So Phil winds up, calls calls the, the track, says, I need some I need some stalls for my horses at Maywood. And then he takes the horses and uh Mickey goes and trains them, just like I thought. He would ask Mickey to train the horses. But that was okay with me. You know? Got no beef with Mick. So anyway, he goes to Maywood with the horses. A few days after after that I'm in the barn working, and a couple of my grooms go talk, start talking about what the incident with Phil and the horses and Mickey. He goes, "Boy, one of my grooms, he goes Tommy Keita, and uh, he was with me for a long time." He goes, "Boy, oh boy," he goes, "I can't believe what they what, what happened." I go, "Why? What happened? Well, you know, I don't know. Phil and I got into it in the van or, or nothing, really. You know, it was a long trip. We were all aggravated, and one thing led to another, and he's got a temper, and I got a temper, and uh." You know, he split up. He goes, yeah, but you don't know what was going on. I go, what do you mean what was going on? He goes, you don't know what was going on? I go, no, I don't know what was going on. What, what was going on? He goes, Mickey was bad-mouthing you, you guys. He said, you guys, okay. Every time you weren't around, he was bad-mouthing you guys. To, to, to racetrack Phil. What? What do you mean? Oh yeah, he was telling them all kind of stuff. You care more about worrying about surrender than worrying about his horse. He don't care about Ritmo. He he's worried about surrender. He uh, uh, he he's doing this. He's doing that. And then, and every time you guys weren't around, you're in New York buying horses or you're racing or something. That uh, he's bad mouthing you. No wonder why it happened. No wonder why Phil was all up in arms. And he, he did, wanted to get it out and wanted to explode because he believed what he was being told. Lies. Total lies by our friend. By our friend that we gave a job that was sitting there on my couch saying he wanted to kill himself. And this guy, we give him a job and this guy's lying to racetrack Phil telling him stories. Every horse in our stable, in my stable, okay, was treated the same. No owner sur 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 surpassed another owner. Every horse got the same care. Every horse got the same attention. Okay? There was no funniness in the Nance Racing Stable. I'll tell you that, pal. So that was going on. What was I, what was I told when I wanted to hire Mick? Oh, I don't know about that. You, you know what? You know what he did, to Eddie Holdeman, when he went to work for Eddie. He wound up taking three or four of his horses. Well, guess what? I guess the same thing happened again. 
So now I'm steaming. Now I'm, I'm mad about it. Okay, I, I'm just totally mad about this. All right? That, th that Mick, our friend, is backstabbing me, us, behind our back. And it leads to an argument with Phil and I who never had a problem with each other, ever. Because stuff was being put in his head that were lies. All right? And I, didn't, I wasn't going to sit here and listen to lies, so I exploded back. Right? Okay. So now they're at Maywood. Of course, Mick gets uh, Benefield and whoever else in the barn. Hey, this is what we got to do to Ritmo. We got to fix him up. This is what, here's the blue x-rays. This is what's wrong. We got to do this. Okay, let's do it. So they, they work on Ritmo, work on that knee and everything. Ritmo gets good, like he's supposed to. He starts working his way up through the ranks, buddy. He's getting good. He hits the free-for-all. He's a free-for-aller now. Mick's got himself a free-for-aller, thanks to the, to the Nance Racing Stable. Oh, and by the way, another thing that my groom told me, he goes, you know, Mickey, one of the grooms left. Oh, you know who it was? It was Craig Smith. You know Craig Smith? The trainer Craig Smith? Who's, you know, he don't train no more for some reason, but you know Craig Smith. He was working for us at the time. And he left and went with Mickey when, when Phil went. Went and took care of the horses with Mickey. And uh, one of my grooms told me, he goes, you know what? Oh, no, it was Craig Smith that told me, I believe. He said, everything that you guys did in your barn, that you did in your barn, your training methods, the way you trained, how you would give your horses two days off after they raced. How you trained a lot of double headers. Ba 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 ba. Mickey does operates the same way you guys do now. Same way you do. Oh really? Oh okay. Good. Good for Mick. So now you know. Anyway, I'm steaming about this whole thing. I find out that we were being backstabbed, and that's what led to the argument. And we and we lose Ritmo. And we lose Phil. All right. Well, I said, well, I'm never going to talk to Mickey again. I'll never talk to him again. And I was, I kept it, never confronted him, never said nothing to him, never said nothing to Phil. About it, nothing. Go on your way. I'll go my way, you go your way. Good luck. So, that sets the scenario of what took place this night at Maywood Park. Because in the back of my mind, I remember all this, of what happened. So now, the night came where Eclipse met Ritmo in the free-for-all at Maywood. Ritmo had the, uh, uh, had the three-hole. He was three to five. And I had the rail with Eclipse that night. Okay, so now, night of the race. I mean, I'm 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 just in pumped up inside. I'm just. We're in the paddock at Maywood Park, and uh, Phil comes walking down with his wife over by Ritmo's stall there in the paddock, and I'm kind of like across the aisle because the way the paddock was set up, they had four horses on one side, four on the other for that particular race. And I'm like right across from them. And I remember them sitting there, they're laughing, smiling, because you know, they figure they're a cinch. They're three to five, nobody's beating us tonight. All right, I'm sitting on my bucket, my paddock bucket. I'm sitting there. And I'm just staring over at Mickey, Phil, Ritmo, the whole crew. I, I, I just, like this. So I'm just staring at them for the time that we're in the paddock before the race comes up. Every time they look over, they see me like this. Eighth race will go out in one minute. Eighth race will go out in one minute. Horses go on a track for the race. Race goes off. 
Ritmo goes to the top. He's wire in the field. Eclipse is getting a great trip. There's no open stretch back then. So I got to worry about getting locked in. McGee got him away right in the two hole. The hands. Right behind Ritmo. He's 20 to 1. McGee with Eclipse. Go around the track. They turn for home. It's Ritmo on the lead. Here comes Eclipse on the far outside. It's Ritmo and Eclipse. Here comes Eclipse. Forget it. Eclipse wins. 20 to 1 beats Ritmo. Now, here's what happens. I'm in the paddock watching the race on the TV in the paddock. You got the little car there at Maywood that drives the people to the winner's circle. Okay, from the paddock. I walk out of the paddock to jump in the car to go to the winner's circle. As I come out the paddock door, step onto the track to grab the car, I look over, you know, 50 yards, 40 yards down the ways there by the draw gate, by the paddock draw gate, where all the horses pull up to get their numbers pulled. And as I look back, I see Mickey walking on the track with Craig to go get the horse. I was just so pumped up and so furious and mad that what happened, all those events that took place, and what he did to me, okay, I turned around and I yelled to him, Hey, Mick! Hey, Mick! He turns around and looks at me, and I go, you will never beat me. Do you understand that? Never, ever will you beat me in a race, ever, Mickey, ever. And I started walking to get into the car. He turns around on the track, you know, we're a distance away, and he yells in front of everybody, and he grabs his crotch with both hands, and he goes, Fuck you! Fuck you, motherfucker! Fuck you! <laughs> I get in the car, I go get my picture taken. Come back to the paddock, nothing, he's gone, he's gone. As far as I'm concerned, it's over. I said what I had to say. You will never, ever beat me in a horse race, Ricky. Oh, no, I, I got to take this back, okay? Because I was so pumped up when I turned around and said, Hey, Mick, hey, Mick, you will never beat me, ever. I'm the best. You understand? I'm the best. And that's what fired him up when he grabbed me. And he, F you, mother. F you. It was over. As far as I'm concerned, I got my revenge. I beat him. I beat Ritmo. That's it. Over, done, finished. End of story. Got my satisfaction. The next morning, after the race, I'm walking into Maywood. It's in the afternoon, somewhere around noon. I'm walking through the backside. Mickey was stabled in the D barns, right behind the back, the fence in the backside. Those little barns, the D barns. I had horses stabled down in the C barns. So I had to pass by their barn when I went to my, bar, my, my barn. So I'm walking on the backside. I'm walking past the barn. He's got the door open because everybody always had their doors open in those D barns. I walk right by. Never said a word to nobody. Never said nothing. Phil was in the barn. Racetrack Phil was there. The whole crew was in the barn there in the morning, whatever they were doing. I walk right by. I get a ways down from their barn. All of a sudden, I hear racetrack Phil. Hey, Dan, Dan, come here. You know, we had the cigarette, you know. Phil had the cigarette. Hey, Dan, come here. I said, well, yeah, what's up, Phil? I want to talk to you. So we go and we're standing by the draw gate on the backside there. In the middle of the backside, there's a draw gate there where the horses come onto the track. So Phil, he turns around and he says to me, oh, oh, what, what was this fucking shit between you and Mickey last night? What happened between you and Mick last night? I go, what? I'll tell you what happened. 
I'll say, I said, listen, Phil, I go, you and I have no problem. Did we ever have a problem? I'm going to tell you what happened and why it happened. Because I found out what Mickey was doing to me. With you. And what led to us getting into an argument and you leaving the barn with Ritmo. Okay, I found out from my grooms what he was doing behind my back. Okay? Filling shit in your head that wasn't true. None of it. None of it that he told you was true. I never took better care of surrender or worried about surrender more than I did Ritmo or any other horse for that matter. Alright? And I never did all the other things that he accused me of doing. Alright? And it pissed me off. Because you, you were in my barn for years. How much money did we make you? How much money did I make you, Phil? We always had a good time. Never had a problem with each other. I hire Mickey. I give him a job. He goes in the barn, starts filling your head, and st winds up leaving you and I get into an argument. That's why I'm steaming. And that's why I was so fired up I did what I did last night. And told him he will never beat me. Ever. As long as he races in the same race as me, he will never, his horses, if I'm fifth, he'll be sixth. Okay? And I mean it. And let me tell you something, Phil. I told him, I have never, ever said a bad word about you or your wife or anybody to anybody. All I've ever said about you was you were one of the best owners we ever had. Excuse me, i got to answer this call. Hello? Very sorry about that, people. I had to take that phone call. It's a very important call. Very important. But anyway, as I was saying, I was talking with Phil at the fence. You heard what everything I had to say to him, and I told him I have never said, ever said a bad word about you, your wife, anybody. And all I've ever done is speak highly of you, Phil. Okay, ever. You, you need to know that. Okay, everybody? You go. So then Phil turns around to me and goes, oh, 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 oh okay, darn, darn. Okay. All right, uh, it's over there now, right? It's over there between you and Mick? It's over? I go, yep, it's right over. It's all over now, Phil. Finished and done. Phil went on his way. I went on my way. Always talked to each other. Remained friends. till the day he died. Okay? Never had a problem with racetrack Phil. Shouldn't, shouldn't have ever had a problem with Phil. But these are the kind of things that happen in the racing game. Things that go on between other, other trainers and people. You know, friendship sometimes doesn't matter. When you need to better yourself, you go backstab. But you know what? I never backstabbed anybody. I don't need to backstab nobody or steal anybody's owners. Or do anything like that. Okay? I don't do that kind of stuff. Not me. Maybe other people do it, but not me. All right? And I didn't appreciate it. And I'll, and I'll tell you another little thing. I never did talk to Mickey Rodriguez anymore for the next 86, 87, 88, 89, 90, 91, somewhere in a nine, all the way through. Didn't talk to him at all. Guy that was our friend, my friend. And you know what? Honest to God, truth. He never, ever beat me in a harness race when he was in against me. He never, he never beat me. Nope. 
No, nope. like I said, if I was seventh, he was eighth. If I won, he might have been second. But he never finished ahead of me in a horse race. Then, later on down the road, years, years later, Mickey, Mickey had a good stable after that. He had a lot of big owners, good owners coming. He had, uh, uh, you know, good horses uh, uh, for all those guys and everything. And El Morehouse, big shot owner, you know, with all the cash he got. Him. Mickey was going good. Mickey was rolling good. Okay. Good for Mick. You know. But then later on down the road, I think it was in the early 90s, somewhere in there. Late 90s, I can't remember. No, early 90s, I believe it was. Or late 90s. I don't know. Those kind of dates I don't remember. But Mickey was on his way down, downhill. He was, uh, for some reason, he quit training then. He was, he was in some kind of tax trouble or something. I don't know what happened. He had his name down on horses that he owned. He said he was the owner, but he didn't own them. He had his name down for other people or something. He got into some tax trouble. And he wound up uh, not training anymore. And I remember sitting at Hawthorne. And I believe it was... Uh, one of the last years they might have raced at Hawthorne, sometime in the 90s. And uh, we used to always sit in the clubhouse down by that bar. If you walked into the grandstand level, but on the clubhouse side, we used to sit in those tables near that one bar there. And uh, Big Butch, one of my good friends, Big Butch Hoschild, he was there that night, I remember, that afternoon. I think it was afternoon racing. So we're all sitting there at this table, and Mickey was sitting there. And, you know what, after years have gone by and all that, uh, that was the first time I ended, I ended up talking to him. I, I spoke a couple words to him because I knew he was down and out and things weren't going good for him. He didn't even have any horses left. And he, was, he was selling cars, I believe. I, th I believe he was selling cars with Big Bad Butch. Yeah, I believe he was selling cars at the time. So the career ended. But I remember speaking to him then, it, it, years, years later. So it was over and done, the incident. But then when I moved out here to Vegas in 99, I think a year after I moved out here, I heard that Big Mick died. You know, he had a lot of health problems. He always had a big weight problem his whole life. and You know, he had diabetes and things like that. And, you know, I guess it got to him and a Big Mick died. You know, and I was felt bad about it. But, uh, you know, other than that incident that took place there with Ritmo and the things that happened and what happened that night at Maywood, other than that, uh, nothing. And never nothing with Racetrack Phil. Never nothing except that one little incident that took place on our way back from New York with the horses. And now I, you know, I knew why. Found out later on why. And then I reacted the way I reacted. So that's that. And uh, Phil, rest his soul, he passed away last June. I was glad that I was able to see Phil out here in Vegas. A couple years prior before he passed, he was out here for about a week. I picked him up just about every night. We'd go to the track, out to the Red Rock or South Point somewhere and watch the races and we talked about a lot of stuff and everything and, you know and then I, he came to the house here and I did that interview with him that we put on the old uh, harness for him that we had that one stop harness racing for him I was glad I was able to get that interview I wish I, I, wish I would have saved that interview somewhere and had that you know you get rid of stuff that you wish you'd save but uh, he was going to supposed to come back out here after that again and we were going to meet up and, you know, go to the tracks again, but uh, he got sick after that, you know. Matter of fact, when he was out there here that year, I remember sitting with him at Red Rock, and he had said, yeah, I had a scare. You know, my doctor told me I have some problem with my liver, and they found some. But then again, she called me back. It was a mistake or something. It was a mistake. So she said it was all right. It wasn't what they thought it was. So then later on, a year or so later after that is when... I found out that uh, he was having liver cancer and stuff, and uh, battling that. He battled that for about a year, hung in there for about a year with that. I talked to him all the time, called him up on the phone, talked to him. You know, so, anyway, 
that was the story about what happened between me and Big Mick and that involved Phil and Ritmo. But at least, uh, you know, time goes on and things heal up. And uh, that's the way it was. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed my little story here about what took place one night at Maywood Park. It's things like this that make uh, your life as a Chicago harness trainer a real fiasco sometimes. Anyway, thanks for listening. Hope you enjoyed the story. And I'll see you next time when I think of another story to tell about my life as a Chicago harness racing trainer. Take care.